I'm a reporter for the Daily Chronicle. If there's one thing that I've learned throughout my years as a reporter, it's that the end of the story is rarely the end of the story. In fact, sometimes it is just the beginning. This is a story that was the beginning for me. Although we only met for a brief moment and there was only one word exchanged between us, my life was changed forever. Hello, I'm the reporter from the Chronicle. Come in. Thank you. The interview was with Vincenzo Vivaldi, the world's foremost violinist and composer. I admit I didn't know much about him, but I had my questions at the ready. How did he become such a success? How did he create such a legacy? And what inspired him to learn the violin? I felt as though I was stepping on sacred ground when I entered the old man's room. I could feel that his time to depart was drawing nigh. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Vivaldi. Um, for our readers, what would be the one key factor in achieving all of your great and grand accomplishments? Those were the last words he ever spoke. As I left the house that day, I now had a greater question than when I had arrived. is a composer's greatest work and the opus is about us becoming the most amazing magnificent extraordinary human beings that we were meant to be you and I are here to do magnificent and magnanimous things you're here to create and you're here to contribute and you're here to connect at a high velocity everybody deep inside has a dream and a vision and a calling and an inspiration that they're here to do Anyone can do this, and I, it almost sounds cliche. You, everybody says, oh, you can be whatever you want to be. You just got to have the dream. And all of that's true. Unfortunately, it has become cliche, and people have stopped listening to it. The best way for you to predict your future is to invent it. It's up to you. Vincenzo came to America when he was seven years old. He came from the old country, Europe. When he got on board the boat that would take him to America, he had no idea he was about to encounter two things that would change his life forever. One was a new country. The other was a teacher and a violin. As the boy listened, 
He was captivated. And in his heart, he knew that one day, he would play this song. Vincenzo said that he wanted to play like that one day. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe you can? The old man asked. The young boy replied, yes. That is the key to unlocking your opus. The old man smiled and told him that he had just begun on the road to becoming great. He gave Vincenzo a notebook and told him to write down exactly what he wanted and to keep the book with him always. Vincenzo wrote that one day he would become one of the greatest violinists the world had ever known. The old man put his hand on the boy's shoulder. When you get there, don't stop. Remember, your opus isn't what you do. It will be the legacy of what you've become. Vincenzo did not understand. The old master smiled and said, one day you will. As Vincenzo left the old man, he was grateful, for he had been given a great gift. And although he would never know the man's name, the man had changed his life forever. Vision is all about who you've decided to be, as if you had a magic wand that you could wave over your life, that you could actually be and do and have everything that's important to you, where you could be fulfilled and you could be in rich relationships and you could be abundant, attracting wealth and, and all the great things that we all want in life. You know, you can start your, if you will, your path at a very early age or start it much later in life. I don't think it really matters when you start, but I think what you should try to be thinking about and looking for is something you just love to do. Something that really gives you energy. Uh, you've got a passion and that you feel you can commit yourself to. Some people get into vision and purpose and they make it so huge or they think it has to be so big that they scare themselves and they almost freeze themselves and don't come up with anything. Your vitality in life is directly proportionate to the vividness of your vision. And when you have a clear vision, uh, magnetic things occur and you draw into your life amazing synchronicities. People, places, things, ideas, and events start to synchronize in your life to help you fulfill your vision. The law of attraction just says that anything we think, feel, say, and do, we attract to us. So we're always creating through what we're putting out in our thoughts, our feelings, our words, and our actions. A very common misconception about the law of attraction, people learning it, is that it's all about positive thinking, and it is not. Positive thinking is obviously, you know, probably more beneficial than negative thinking, sustained negative thinking. But positive thinking can mean just that you're thinking about things that would normally make a person happy. But if you're not truly emotionally involved with your thoughts, you're not really having an attractive power. In other words, if you're visualizing a car, you're visualizing a house, or you're visualizing lots of money, or whatever your version of success is, but you don't have any real feeling about it, you know, a, a, that is in alignment with that. In other words, if you don't feel positive about those thoughts, you're actually not attracting anything positive. It's the feeling that powers our thoughts. The Institute of Heart Math, which is the most widely recognized research institute on the heart, has shown that our hearts have an energy field around them that's 5,000 times more powerful than our brains. So this is the real power source for people. And when we want something from our head, it can only go so far. But when we power it from, with the, the feeling in our heart, the feeling of knowing that I can get it, the feeling of love behind that thought, then we are moved to the inspired action that will bring us what, what it is we're wanting. Anytime we set goals that are not congruent with our highest values, we're gonna tend to not stay focused on it. We're going to keep going back to what's truly important to us. 
And so it's a very crucial to set objectives that are congruent and aligned with the highest values, because when you do, you don't require outside motivation. You're inspired from within. I work with teens every day. I've worked with thousands of teenagers all over the country. And what I know to help teenagers love and believe in themselves and have that success-driven vision that so many adults have is the very first thing you have to do is be original. Be yourself. Don't conform. Don't transform. Find your own original gifts. You have them. You have so many. And lead with those. Belief in yourself is the first step to anything great. If you don't believe you can do it, you're finished even before you get to the starting line. You see it all the time in grade school. The kids line up to run the 100-yard dash. They all start off pretty good, but as soon as one or two of those kids pulls ahead, you see a few in the running literally slow down and sometimes stop. That's because when those kids see someone pick up speed, they begin to doubt that they'll ever catch them. And their brain says, what's the use? And suddenly they believe it here, and everything slows down. I started out in a life of welfare and poverty and became the 25th wealthiest person in America. That would be an extreme that most people can't even comprehend, let alone relate to. And it all started because I believed in my own possibilities. Whatever we believe, we become. I don't really think uh, we know what we're capable of. There's incredible potential in all of us. And I mean in all of us, not some of us, all of us. If you find your passion and that energy wells up in you, and if you can dream and, and start to get committed to that dream and that vision, then you can be successful and far beyond what you ever thought you could. It is okay to believe in yourself. Start now. Start today. You are the greatest you that will ever be. Vincenzo had set a goal. He began to see it powerfully and perfectly. It became real. He experienced it in his mind and in his heart. He was living it vividly as though it had already happened. This gave him the momentum to begin. I think that the only way you can get to your goal is by having a clear vision. And I feel that that clear vision doesn't necessarily come from your head, but that it comes up from inside of you. That the more we access our gut feeling, the more that we access our core individuality and listen to what it is that's wanting to be said through us, then we have a clear vision of what we're about. The problem is most people don't really have that clear vision of what success is for them because they've never felt like they were allowed to have that vision for themselves. They always felt like they had to live in to somebody else's idea of what success is. I think one of the steps that people may not do quite properly is that first step of intention. So many times people's intentions are coming out of a feeling of obligation or I should when I find that people really stop, which is a hard thing to do in our society to stop, but it's the thing that is most required for us to stop and turn inward. Someone asked me one day, if you could have anything that you wanted, if you could have your dream life, it could, if it could look any way that you wanted it to look, what would it be? And I was stumped because I was so used to being good at responding to my difficult circumstances that I even honored myself for being able to to make the best of a bad situation so I would constantly have to wait for bad situations to come around in order to identify who I was and to feel my strength to be able to go out there and do something and so when someone asked me well if you could just be on the front side of something like that and just have it be whatever you would want it to be what would it be and I couldn't answer the question. I thought, I've, I've got some different kind of work to do. The only way you can get a clear picture of where you're going and to understand what it is that you want out of life, you must silence the restless thoughts that are going through your mind. And you have to ask yourself, what do I want? How do I feel? And where do I want to go? In the 1960s, President Kennedy suggested that NASA was going to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And NASA took the plan and they said, okay, what's success look like? Success looks like not man on the moon, but 
astronauts safely back on Earth. So they said, let's plan from there. So there's a group of scientists who looked forward to success and said, let's work backwards and put the plan in place. Now the problem most of us have is we don't have a clear vision of what success is. I started thinking about the creative process of living your life as it relates to creating music, because I enjoy creating music and I always have. And it comes back, and I saw the parallel so clearly between how the process is the same. When I sit down to write a piece of music, it's generally born out of some inspiration. You know, I don't work under, uh, under the rules that you have to write this type of piece of music, it's got to be 30 seconds and it's got to be this beats per minute. You know, I have full, because I do it for fun, you know, I have full creative control, so I work from inspiration, just as we should work from inspiration in our lives. That is what should guide us, that is what it should help us to create our vision, this feeling of inspiration, not someone else's, not someone else's sense of passion, or their likes or interests, but our own. I have a philosophy of life, and that is this. Achieving any type of goal in your life is 99% intention, 1% methodology. Is being crystal clear about what you want and the how, the methodology, will show up later. When people talk of clarity, it often gets described as just writing down your goals. The most important element is often left out. That's finding your motivation. If you want to get to your goals quickly, you've got to have clarity on why you want it. What does it mean to you? Why do you need it in your life? And the stronger and more important the why, the more power you will have to pursue that goal. Finally, the opportunity came for Vincenzo to have his violin. The moment he saw it, he knew that he had to have it. A loving mother felt the same way. It was not as easy as it looked. But Vincenzo had made a decision and a commitment that he would learn to master this instrument no matter what. Finding your clarity starts from first setting goals, not just thinking them, inking them, writing them down, having that vision board. Put those things on your board the way you picture your life to be the lifestyles you want. It's okay to brainstorm it. Start with an idea, oh, I've always wanted to do this, and flesh it out. Really describe what you want your life to be. You may find that it evolves even as you write, and that's okay. Take the time to decide what you truly want, because it isn't until you do that that you're actually you're going to be able to stabilize any sort of vibration around it from a law of attraction point of view to attract that into reality. When you're in the achievement process, what is your greatest moment? Some people think that it's when you're at the finish line or at the top of the mountain peak or when your bank account has finally reached that bulging, overflowing amount. If those are your goals, then those moments when you get there may be exciting. There's no doubt about that. But that isn't your greatest moment. Your greatest moment can be measured by three things that make it great. What moment will have the longest effect on your future life? What moment will carry the greatest future consequences? And which moment will have the farthest reaching impact on you and those around you? Your greatest moment therefore becomes the moment that you decide. Decision changes everything. As Vincenzo grew from a boy to a man, he never lost sight of the dream. Vincenzo worked and saved his money to pay for lessons for his violin. He's doing it again, thinking about everything except what he's supposed to be doing. 
There were those who told him that his dream was impossible, that it could never be achieved. Still believes he's going to be famous. Ladies and gentlemen, the famous, one and only, time wasting, daydreaming, broom pusher. <laughs> <laughs> But he remembered the words of the old master on the boat. Do you really believe you can? That is the key to unlocking your opus. Vincenzo! Sweep the floor, boy! Sweep! Vincenzo gained courage and continued forward. How do I get started? You just get started. Most people wait. They're going, waiting for their time. Wait till I know more. Wait till I do more. Wait till I learn more. Wait till my time is right. Your time is now. So just get started. You can't sit on the couch and eat potato chips and expect things to happen. You visualize and you materialize, yes, but you must act. A mediocre plan today is far better than a perfect plan tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. We all know that New Year's resolutions last 30 days or three weeks or three days or for some people three hours and that's a result of this great commitment and what I want people to do is to step back and interestingly enough to essentially dial it down. Focus on what you can do not what you could do. If you can't get the big picture start with the small stuff. A decision isn't something you take lightly. It isn't a wish or simply saying, I'd like to. There'll be no power in it until you say with clarity, I will do it, and attach that commitment to some action. What will you do to get things started? I'm a big believer in planning, partly because my career, my first career was in the television industry. And if you don't plan a program, you're asking for a disaster. And that's not to say that you set a plan down that's, that's absolutely rigid. But you put a plan down that you can then change and adjust as you need to when you're going through the production. Same thing with the writing of the music. I start with an end in mind in terms of how I want to feel, but I don't have every note already written in my head. That's what makes this process so fun and creative. Because the minute you feel like you have to go here because that's where you said you were going to go in the first place, the song has to sound like this because that was my original vision, you cut off all sorts of possibility. You don't have to know everything before you get started. Top achievers never have all the answers. And they also don't wait for all the answers to come until they get started. They just get started. They don't let questions paralyze them. They understand how to face the unknown and have the courage to do new things without all the answers. They know that the answers will come. And they adjust their course with each step forward that they take. Most of the answers come in the action, not in the calculating. You've got to learn that too. When you're up against the unknown, remember this phrase. Top achievers are not perfectionists. They're improvisers. Get started. It's hard to start. Uh, it's scary. And uh, I, I know I've seen in my own life that some people just, they're just waiting for everything to be perfect. There is no perfect time. You never have a perfect plan. You just. But you need to move forward. If you're convinced and you're passionate, it will develop. Have some faith. It can happen. It will happen. You got to stay positive, but you got to keep moving forward. And you got to keep move, moving forward knowing you don't have all the answers. I wanted to be a fighter pilot my entire life, but back in 1986, there was an experience which pretty much dashed my hopes up against the rocks. Back in 1986, the movie Top Gun came out, and you'd think that that would be a source of motivation for me, but really what it was, was everybody else at that point now wanted to do the same thing that I wanted to do. Everyone wanted to become a fighter pilot because they all wanted to be just like Maverick. And what I knew back then was I was a pretty average guy. I knew that the people who were ahead of me were, were smarter, faster, they were stronger, and I thought, man, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore because all these people now want to do what I want to do. You know, we're being honest here, so I'll just tell you, I mean, I failed kindergarten. And I don't know if you know what it takes to, to pass kindergarten, but you basically need to be able to stack blocks and not eat glue, okay? I mean, that's pretty much about it. So I failed kindergarten. I know that I'm a pretty average guy, okay? 
And I look at all these people who are ahead of me, and I'm thinking, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to make it. But, you know, I followed through with my dreams, and I, and I pressed on. And what I realized through that experience was that I may have been in the, low, the fifth percentile on the bottom, but the 95% of the people who are above me never took any action. Often people have a great idea, and they get excited about it, and they go, wow, I'm going to go do this. But you know something? They don't do it. They think about it. They get excited about it, maybe for an hour, maybe for a day, maybe even for a week or a month but it dies. They don't take action. They're really not committed. They're really not passionate for it. It's like a passing idea. And so one of the things to be successful, one of, one of the most important things to be successful is, okay, you've got a dream, you've got a vision, you've got plans, and now you've got to go for it. If you believe in something fully, you take action. I always tell people the last six letters of the word attraction spell action. And most people are focusing on this part and they're not doing the doing this. So when you believe that it's going to happen and you're visualizing clearly and you're holding all that energy, what will happen is you'll start attracting to you not necessarily the car, but opportunities, strategies, resources, books, etc. that will come into your life. If you don't take action, you won't get the results. You must take action. It may be very small, it may be very big. It's what I call inspired action because it's something that's coming from within you. You get a little knock at the door that says attend this seminar, uh, go to this movie, buy this particular book, whatever it happens to be. Your part in this co-creation process is to do it. I was successful really in a lot of ways just because I went and did it. I took action. And so you're sitting here today, you've got a dream, you've got a goal, you've got an aspiration. You might have an invention, a million dollar idea. And what's sitting between you and the execution of your dreams can be simply summed up in this. Take action. Implement. You grab the bull by the horns, you put the throttles up and afterburner, you live your life at the edge of the envelope, and you will be successful. Vincenzo continued seeking additional understanding and education wherever he could, surrounding himself with other masters who could help him find his gift and develop his passion. This required effort and work. As he practiced and persevered, his skills became more fine-tuned, and the instrument began to sing. Whatever you want to do, whether you're an athlete, whether you're in business, whether you're a pilot, if you want to be successful, there are heroes, there are masters, there are people who have been successful before you who will be willing to teach you how to get where you want to be. You don't need to fly solo in this life. If you have any goal that you want to achieve in your life, the first thing I would invite you to do is surround yourself with people who believe in what you do. And sometimes those people, they're not your family, they're not your friends, they're not your coworkers. You actually have to create that. You have to create your own, what I call your own mastermind, your own board of directors of people who will support you. My adage is that if I'm ever in a room with five people, I want to be the dumbest one in the room. I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. I want to be the dumbest one in the room. If I'm the smartest guy in the room, then I'm not listening to anybody. Then I think I already know it. Then I think they're not capable of teaching, training, sharing, or, or giving me anything of value. But if I think I'm the dumbest one in the room, then all four of them are brighter than I am. And I can learn from any one of them. And what that causes me to do is to shut up and sit down. I and mean, get a chance to learn, because most of us are talking so much, we aren't listening. I like the idea of modeling other people's success up until the point where you reach something that, hey, this isn't me. It's not me to model this guy like that. Because if you try, it will not work. You'll send out this really weird field of resistance and things will not work for you, no matter how successful that other person is. So I model lots of people, but not one particular person. I will look for things that they do and then say, I can incorporate that into my plan for sure. This guy over here, no, not so much. This is where I leave him and go to somebody else.
Whenever there is greatness, there is also adversity. When we work, there will be obstacles. Vincenzo's obstacle came when he turned 17. One day, as he was walking to his teachers to practice his violin, he found that his vision began to blur. Soon, there were great dark spots appearing before his eyes. And one day, he woke up totally blind. He could not see. This proved to be a big adversity. On March 10, 1981, I thought I had the world by the tail. I was Miss the egotistical. I was self-centered. I was center of the whole universe, and so I thought. I was very successful. I'd gone into the life insurance business and making a lot of money. Had a nice home, had a nice car, had a wife. You know, I was living the American dream, and so I thought. And then I went and bought myself an airplane. The next day I took off in that airplane for a little pleasure trip just to check it out. Then in that day my whole life changed. I had a power failure when I was landing, the engine failed, I had some power lines and crashed. I was just entering my senior year and I wasn't really going out much. I was, mm, we had moved to a new town and I was feeling a bit awkward in my skin. I went out and I met someone, I thought, oh, he's the one, and ended up pregnant in my senior year. And if you want to be judged, I was going into a school where there were nuns and they were convinced and, and so it was my entire school system that found out I was pregnant in my senior year that I was going to go to some place with the letter H and three letters that followed. And it took me a long time to regain my self-esteem. And so my life started out as a pregnant teenage runaway. When I was born, my parents didn't know that I was a little, well, didn't think that I was going to be a little person, of course. So that was a big surprise. And they had some difficulty with it, some challenges with it. Then I went off to school and I had challenges with kids there teasing me, calling me names, stuff like that. Four days later, I woke up in the hospital. I was in coma four days and I was in bad shape. My neck was broken at the first and second cervical vertebrae and my spinal cord was crushed. The nerves that controlled my diaphragm were destroyed and I couldn't breathe. My swollen for your flesh was destroyed and I couldn't eat or drink. My larynx and voice box were crushed. Every muscle in my body was destroyed. I couldn't do anything but blink my eyes. My bowel, blood, and kidneys didn't have function. I lay there for eight months in that hospital. All I could do was blink my eyes. The doctor said it was hopeless. I prayed that I could learn something through this experience and maybe one day I could help others through it. Well, I gave birth to a little baby girl and I kept that little baby girl for five months and it was a tough five months. It was a tough road to hoe. I, I, I worked three jobs and I couldn't really make my ends meet. Uh, one day I made a decision to place her for adoption. And when I did that and the lady came and took her away and drove away with my baby, I thought I was the worst sinner on planet Earth. And it took a long time for me to regain self-esteem and to come to know myself that I was a valuable person and I was a valuable part of this society. And in fourth grade, a turning point came for me, one of the first ones, when I realized that being a little person wasn't something that, like, wasn't a costume that I could take off one day, that actually I was going to be a little person for the rest of my life. And my friends were now at least one and a half to two feet taller than me. I wasn't just the short kids in the class. I was now significantly different. Eight months later, I walked down the hospital on my own two feet. The doctor said it was impossible, but I walked out of there. But that wasn't the end of the journey. That was just the beginning, because I had five more years of intense occupation of physical therapy. So I went to work. And when I went to work, I decided I was going to make something of myself. And maybe one day I'd see that little girl again, and maybe I'd be able to be an example, a living example of something wonderful. One day I was sitting with my teacher, my teacher for spiritual and personal growth, and he said to me, you know, Peggy, I noticed that you spend a lot of time in this fantasy that one day you're going to wake up like an average-sized person, or as an average-sized person, and all your problems are going to be gone. That's not really so realistic. 
And I bet your success level would be much higher if instead you focus on the things that you can change. The things like your attitude, your beliefs, your connection to spirit, all those kinds of things. So that was a turning point for me. And I actually looked at that and I was like, oh my God, I'm believing in this fantasy. And I had to come with to, to terms with the fact that I had to accept that I couldn't change my outer size. But I saw that I could change my inner size. See, it didn't matter what the doctors thought. It didn't matter what the medical profession thought. It didn't matter what other people thought or believed. What really mattered was what I believed. See, a lot of people think, well, I can't do that, so I can't do that, because everybody tells them they can't do that. And I tell them it doesn't matter what other people tell them. It matters what they think. Well, last year on Mother's Day, now we're talking 27 years after that day when that lady drove away with that baby, I got a call from guess who? My little daughter, Jackie. And she said on the telephone, could I call you mom? That was huge. That was huge for me. And um, I don't care what happened to you in your life. Someone told you you're a sinner and you're so down and out that you think you're nothing and you're a nobody. You're a somebody. You find it within yourself and you get up. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And you get out there and do good works. Jackie and I have become real good friends today. And I thank God she's a valuable part of this life. You know, I barely finished high school. Today I sat on the Harvard Women's Leadership Board. Were the times I was down, were the times that maybe the vision started to fade a little bit? You know, I'd, I'd be dishonest if I, if I said they weren't. Of course there were times. But I didn't stay focused on that very long. It's, see, it's okay to let yourself get down, but it's not okay to stay down. I have gone from the depths of darkness to the height of amazing, amazing joy and even ecstasy. I always say that I used to cry every day out of sadness. Now, I cry most days out of joy. Vincenzo continued to practice his instrument. But it was much harder now. The music didn't come as easily. Often the notes didn't sound right. Often the people near him told him he was failing. He began to feel like he was failing. I can't. Vincenzo had given up. He felt like he had been robbed of the gift he had been given. His heart ached as he approached the entrance to the merchant's store. Hi, Vincenzo. No surprise. What can you do? I'd like to sell my violin. Those were the most painful words that he had ever spoke. Are you certain about that? Let's have a look, shall we? Oh my. Isn't this the same violin I sold you many years ago? And you want to bring it back to me? Yes, I do. Hmm. Well, I'm certain you've kept it in fine condition. But I really have to know that it works. So, would you do me a small thing? I wonder if we would play a little bit for me, Vincenzo. I don't have my music with me. Mm. Sometimes we don't need sheet music. Sometimes music is in the soul. So, just once for me. 
Reluctantly, Vincenzo took the violin and placing it properly in position under his chin, he began to play. slowly at first until his heart began to play the notes as he did something magical began to happen he began to feel the power of the music once again When he had finished, a change had taken place, and there was hope. I can't sell you my violin. I thought it's not. You keep the violin, Vincenzo, and play, all right? Vincenzo left the shop with a resolution that he would never again give up on his dream. Everybody experiences failure, and if you haven't, it's just because you haven't done anything new. Because everything new requires failure, it's just a fact. In education, there's a term designated for new learners. It's called the J-curve, a J. When we start, we may begin here. As we begin to implement the new experience or information in our life, we initially struggle, or perhaps even fail. But as we learn the lessons from our failure and are per persistent, we become competent and very successful with our new lessons or experience. And as we get competent, things go up dramatically. That's a J-curve. Most things in life come to us that way. So as we encounter feelings of frustration, we need to understand that it's normal and we will get through it if we persevere. There was a software executive who made a huge error costing the company millions of dollars. And this is a true story. Millions of dollars at this one mistake or one failure he had made. So he went in, he was called in to see the chairman and the CEO. And of course he brought his, his uh, resignation letter and the, he handed it to the chairman. And the chairman said, what, what are you doing? We just spent millions of dollars educating you. You can't leave us now. Now not every employer is going to be that compassionate, but the universe is. Every one of us gets rejected. And what you and I need to do as individuals is reject rejection. Make yourself rejection proof. When Jack and I started Chicken Soup, we spent three years writing it and then we tried to sell it. We went to New York with a great agent and 33 publishers all said, hit the road, Jack. And then, then we went to the BEA, Book Expo of America, and we went booth to booth to booth to booth. And 144 people, some totally said, buzz off, you guys. That's sappy little stories. They're never going to sell. They're too nice, you guys. Nice. The secret word that every winner knows is called N-E-X-T, next. You're going to meet obstacles. You're going to see adversity. It's going to happen to you. I guarantee it. So what gets you through it? It's your passion. It's your energy. It's your commitment to this game plan. And wow, it can be very, very exciting. I have never met a successful person who hasn't failed. Never. Not in the course of my lifetime, not in the course of my reading, not in the course of my studying, not in the course of, of mankind. Have I ever met a successful person who hasn't, hasn't failed? Now, the difference between successful people and people who are 
unsuccessful, because we all will fail, is that successful people learn how to deal with failures. They learn how to, to accept it and embrace it and understand it and learn from it. And it doesn't, it doesn't become a negative to them. It becomes a learning. It becomes an education. It's a tuition they paid for the education they got. You get a challenge uh, or something you think is a setback. Uh, it's only a setback in your initial perception and only when you don't stop and look at how it could serve you. See, the master is the one that takes whatever happens in their life, supportive or challenging, and asks how does it serve them and their mission. Because it's never what happens on the outside, it's always how you perceive what's up on the outside. So if you can take a challenge and you say, okay, so how do I use this to my greatest advantage, and what are the benefits that I'm going to get from this, and how is it going to help me fulfill my highest values, and how is it going to actually give me a great a step forward? If you ask that question and answer that question, it's not an obstacle. An obstacle is only when you've chosen to see only the drawbacks without the opportunities. Some people are so worried about failing, they don't start. And so one of my friends says, you don't have to get it perfect, just get it started. And then in the process of doing it, you will learn. What is failure? That's easy. It's not trying. It's not getting in the game. It is thinking about it and not doing. You know, you cannot fail if you try, if you get into the game. You know, I like to use the analogy of a missile. When I shoot a missile off of my airplane, all, all missiles initially, they just come off straight. And any engineer will tell you that a missile actually, re actually requires mistakes. It actually requires errors in order to become successful at hitting its target. And so as a missile comes off the airplane, if you've got a plane that's, that's going in this direction, the missile comes off and it sees that the airplane that you're trying to shoot at is going this way. It sees that it needs to correct that way and it makes a correction. Then it makes a smaller correction. Then it makes a smaller correction, and next thing you know, it hits the target. The same is true with us. You know, we've all got dreams. We all have a target. We all have goals. A, a failure-minded person goes down the road towards their goals. They hit that first obstacle, and they go, I'm a failure. I always fail. And they turn around, and they give up their dreams. A success-minded person hits that first obstacle, and they go, you know what? I'm going to be successful. And they make a correction, just like that missile. They hit the next obstacle and they, they make a little bit other correction, just like that missile. And next thing you know, they find that they've zigzagged their way to their target, to success. When I was learning to walk, my parents didn't say, oh, Jack failed after seven tries, let's give up. They said, just, you know, keep coming, boy. However long it takes, you're going to make it. And for me, I've read so many stories about, you know, Thomas Edison, who had 10,000 experiments to invent the light bulb. And when someone said, you failed 10,000 times, he says, no, I never failed once. He said, I invented the light bulb. It just happened to be a 10,000 step process. You're going to have some setbacks in life, some challenges, some difficulties. And those are the days which really test what happens. Maya Angelou says it like this. If there's something in your life you don't like, change it. But if you cannot change it, change your attitude. That is why it's critical for you to work on your attitude and thought to have a reservoir from which to draw from before you need it. Because you're going to have some days which test you, which try you, which really push you to the edge. And those are the days that you need to make sure that you have a positive outlook, a positive inlook, and a positive uplook, that you are thankful and grateful for all things, even the challenging things, because it is through the challenges that we grow, that we stretch, that we start to become all that we can possibly become. In our society, so often we focus on problems and obstacles and challenges and failures, and those kind of things paralyze us. They cause us to stop because we can't really see beyond that. But the truth of the matter is, if we look carefully, we'd see very clearly there is no such thing as a problem. Everything is a puzzle. And there are answers to puzzles. So when you run up against something that you're not sure of, doesn't mean it's a problem. Doesn't mean you can't get around it. You just need to find the right answer for that puzzle. I've decided that every single thing that happens is a success. Everything. There's a learning experience, maybe I achieve whatever the goal was, but I'm going to go after something else. I just learn, grow, and go. Once you reach a goal, whatever that is, or achieve a vision, and it may have evolved, and it may be very different than when you first set out, you, you are basking only momentarily in that sense of accomplishment. You can enjoy it. It's not, it doesn't have to be a letdown, but what you'll find is that you've naturally expanded who you are, who you can be, and you'll have another vision that's even bigger. If you want to have like success become an ongoing habit, you know, here I am at the top of my game, 100 million books sold and so forth, 
For me, it was never about selling books. It was always about making a difference. You can't stop making a difference. You know, making a difference is something that continues forever. It's the little things that you do on a daily basis that get that momentum ball turning. And all of a sudden, after a while, you have so much momentum behind you, you couldn't stop it if you tried. You can have addictions that are actually good for you, that are actually taking you forward in life, that are actually keeping you healthy and happy. And success is one of those. When you start tasting success, you want more of it. Aristotle said, excellence is not an act. It's a habit. So you get in the habit of excellence, and then you can go as high and dimensional and multi-passionately purposeful as you want, which is you don't want to just do one thing. You want to do a multiplicity of things, because when the game called life is over, you look back on life. The only thing you can take with you is your memories. So you want to create a basket full of life memories that are worthy of you, that are valuable, that are vital, that are just exquisitely good. The only difference between people who are happy and those who aren't is their habits. So it's really a very simple thing. It boils down to only one thing. What habits are you choosing day in and day out? And the good news is, is that every day you get a new choice to pick new habits all day long. Every decision you make in every moment is determining the habits that you'll have today and tomorrow and the next day and the outcomes that you'll have in your life. So if you want a life that's successful, choose the habits of successful people. If you want a life that's happy, choose the habits of happy people. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. It's a pleasure to know you're out there. I'm going to be playing a piece Slowly, Vincenzo was offered opportunities to perform his music at local venues. Although these locations were not ultimately where Vincenzo wanted to be, he poured his heart into each of these performances. Each of them was a step in the right direction, and he let his passion shine through from the beginning. As can be expected, this wasn't always easy. There were times he was afraid, but as he faced each challenge and each frightening moment, he seemed to build momentum and increase in his greatness. <laughs> Vincenzo gained a reputation as a passionate musician, and his gift grew doors opened for him to begin to play with other masters. Soon Vincenzo was playing in the most grand concert halls of all. His dream to play was fulfilled. His opus had arrived. But was the journey complete? There was the question the old master had asked him that he still yearned to understand. Your opus isn't just what you do, it will be the legacy of what you have become. Vincenzo thought in his mind often about what this could mean. Was this the legacy of the man he had become? The man who played in the largest concert halls? The man who commanded the respect of the other musicians? The man who composed and wrote the grand symphonies? The man who people adored and loved as the master violinist? Vincenzo still didn't understand. In our, we have in our own DNA, you know, sort of this need, if you will, of, of assisting others and, and helping them move forward towards their own goals or vision. And the, some of the greatest rewards in my life have been watching the success of others that I have been associated with. Henry James said that nothing of the senses will ever satisfy the soul. The only thing that satisfies the soul is gratitude and love. And when you have gratitude and love, Whatever you're grateful for, whatever you love, you get more to be grateful for and you get to have more love. And so the second you achieve something, you're automatically yearning inside and called inside to ever greater achievements. We're all here for what purpose? We're here to give, we're here to interact, we're here to create, we're here to, uh, uh, to love and, and to support. And 
those are all giving. Those are all giving things. Uh, most of the successful people that I know have a basic fundamental philosophical foundation that says giving back is the key to success. A friend of mine asked me recently, he said, what's the purpose of the universe? Now, no one had ever asked me that. You know, life purpose, corporate purpose, all that. What's the purpose of the universe? And I went back to my physics and I thought, well, what is the universe doing? It's expanding ever since the Big Bang. It's expanding. I said, well, is it to expand? And he said, absolutely. And he said, anything you do that helps people, corporations, countries expand, you're in alignment with the universe. And when you're in alignment with the universe, the world will, the universe will support you. It'll give you the resources you need. Anytime you cause contraction, you cause conflict, then you're against what the universe is about. When we feel expanded, it's the universe's message of saying we're on course. When we feel contracted, it's the universe's message saying that we're off course. So as we're moving along, we always move towards that which is making us feel expanded. Service, there is no higher purpose. It's all about giving back. When you focus on giving, you receive, and that's how the law of attraction works. Ultimately, what we contribute is a reflection of who we are inside. And the more we contribute back to the world around us, makes us more inside. Think of your happiest moments. Got it? I'm confident that it will have very little to do with accumulating wealth, and it certainly wasn't a moment where you were alone in your room watching TV. I'd be willing to bet that it was a moment where you did something for someone that they could not do for themselves, or when you helped someone realize a dream, or you shared a little of you, the real you. And in the end, isn't that what life is all about? It's never about what you had. It's about what you did and the difference you made while you were here. Your opus isn't just what you do, it will be the legacy of what you have become. Vincenzo still didn't understand. Then the lesson came as he was playing his violin in the park alone. And so Vincenzo passed along the message that it changed his life. As the boy walked away in the snow, Vincenzo finally understood. It was almost as if the voice of his old friend, the master, came to him. Remember, your opus isn't just what you do. It will be the legacy of what you have become. Imagine, if you would, a hot summer day in the year 1944. Campus Morehouse College. Dr. Benjamin Mays, the president of the college, sits at his desk. There's a knock at the door. He says, come in. He, he sees the door swing open and a man and a teenager are in the doorway. He runs to grab the hand of the man, Martin Luther King Sr., Daddy King. Daddy King steps in and says, Dr. Mays, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I just came to introduce you to my son, Marty. We call him ML. His real name is Martin Luther King Jr. He's 15. He's going to college here in the fall. Very bright boy. But he's missing something and I need a big favor. No, I don't need tuition as big as that. No, I don't need room and board is more critical than that. I came to ask you, would you teach my son how to dream? Please teach my boy how to dream. 
And Dr. Mays gave young Marty a piece and said, young man, read this piece every day and it'll change your life. And he read it and it changed his life. And I got hold of it and I started reading it and it changed my life. It's so profound yet so simple. It simply reads, it must be borne in mind that the tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goals. No, no, no. The tragedy lies in not having a goal to reach for. It is not a calamity to die with your dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It is not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideals, but it is a disaster to have no ideals to capture. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Not failure, but low aim is sin. You've got to dream big dreams, impossible dreams, dreams that will make a difference, leave a legacy, and a dream that will be your opus, your reason for coming to this planet. I truly believe that all of us are very special. We all have some unique, different, wonderful qualities. We shouldn't compare ourselves to others and say, well, they're so much better. We need to find our own special gifts. And as you find those gifts and you become passionate about those gifts, you move towards those gifts and take action. So if you've been watching the Opus, the time is now to take action. No more praying, no more wishing, no more hoping that great things will happen to you. Move forward, take action, become successful. We are all creating our own Opus. We will all leave that legacy. You come to the, the end of your life knowing that you have lived from the inspiration of your heart and that you've lived a life of love and of joy and of happiness because I tell you, you can achieve success in life and that doesn't guarantee happiness. We have to come from love and from that inspiration of why am I here and you'll be happy and you'll be successful. You know in your heart that you want to do something. It might be open a business, it might be open a service, it might be write a book, it might be do any number of things. It's unique to you, but you haven't done it yet. You now have the beginning of some motivation. Your heart is pumping a little faster. The sweat is on your brow because you are excited about this. I want you to take action. I want you to go out there and do something. I want you to dare something worthy. I, I want to be able to say at the end of my life, uh, did I do everything I could with everything I was given? I want to be able to say absolutely. So it's never done. As long as you're green, you're growing. As soon as you're ripe, you're wrong. The joy in your life, the passion in your life, and the success in your life will come when you're brave enough to say, this is me, and then go be that person. Most people tip down through life hoping they make it safely to death. And life is more than that. It's more than just tiptoeing from the time you're born to the time you die making it from day to day, it's much more than that. But yet, most people never realize that. I know that I'm not just a body and a personality, that there's something much, much deeper and greater and actually magnificent inside of me, something extraordinary. And the more that I live from that place, the more that I'm able to see inside of other people that they're extraordinary, that they're awesome, that they're amazing. And the more and more I live from that place, the more I see that each moment of my life is amazing and magnificent. That is the gift that's come out of my challenge. That is my opus. Now you have the tools. You have a vision. You believe you can do it. You're clear and you know why you want it. You have a first action to get started with. You know where to go for help and you know failure can't stop you, only slow you. You are the composer of your life, and your greatest moment is before you. It is decision. What will you decide to do now? What will your opus be? Your opus isn't just what you do, it will be the legacy of what you've become. One of God's greatest requirements with lasting success is to teach the man who possesses it. 
to teach him about himself and to allow him to contribute what he has been blessed with back to the world. Vincenzo's music was a great gift to all who heard it. But the true gift was in the legacy that he created in another. This was truly his opus. And now, as time passes, there's a question that each of us must ask ourselves. What will your opus be?